I'd like to now yield three minutes to my colleague from Michigan, Mr. Rogers. Gentleman is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I find it interesting. I admire my colleague from New York. He's a great speaker. And the reason he comes to the floor is to try to talk about everything else other than what's in the bill. He wants to say what Republicans are for so that they don't have to talk about what's in their bill. And that has been really the effort all along in this particular debate. You know, there is great bipartisan agreement on this bill, and it is overwhelmingly in opposition. Republicans and Democrats, not only on this House floor, work together to say no, but the American people work together to say no. And why? Why would they do that? And why wouldn't you talk about the things that you had to do to try to get people to vote in favor of the bill? There are a slew of things which this body is about ready to approve. The Louisiana Purchase. You made special adjustments. If this is so good and so wonderful, why do we have to put special provisions in this bill to exempt people from its provisions? Why? Because it's bad if everybody has to be a part of this bill. So individual members said, if you give me just something, I can go back and tell my people that I got them out of. It'll be a great day. You know what? You're, you're asking Americans to pit an American against an American. A trillion dollar bill that's not paid for. A bill that raises premiums. A bill that raids the Social Security Trust Fund to pay for a bill that still puts us in deficit. That's what this bill is. It's amazing. I think, you know, wow, we fought for associated health plans where one small business could negotiate with another small business to lower their premiums, and the government, your government, said, no, you can't do that. That's illegal. We said, hey, let's allow folks to cross state lines and, and compete, force insurance companies to compete against each other so that we get lower premiums. And your government, your Democrat policy said, no, that's illegal. And then they said, you know what, this whole system isn't working because we can't associate together with small businesses and buy premiums because we don't like that idea. You can't go across state lines and force insurance companies to compete and be more transparent. We don't like that idea, so we made that illegal. So guess what? The government created the problem, and now they're saying, you know what, this is so hard and so complicated, we're going to give up on democracy and freedom, and the government is going to solve this problem for you. The arrogance is unbelievable. There are such simple things that we could do to lower premiums. There are such simple things that we could create in the free market that would allow people with pre-existing conditions not to be discriminated against. You don't have to cut Medicare $500 billion to do it. You don't have to raid the Social Security Trust Fund to do it. This isn't about health care anymore. It's about politics. And that's so unfortunate. It's unbelievable what you are about to do to the American people. There's a new tax in here, a new tax on everything a doctor touches, from the blood pressure cuff to the x-ray machine to the smock that he wears. I have to tell the you, you can't expired. add cost to the health care system and have the premiums go down. I yield Gentleman back. Yields back.